that Minister Marshall, Stephen Marshall, just walked in. He's the co-liaison to the president, but he also works at Harvard Hospital. So I want him to share a few words, because um, he's in the hospital with what's going on, but he's also a minister, so he can restore our faith in the Lord. <laughs> so I, um, I came here tonight for a purpose. Um, unannounced, I never called actually anybody or the leaders to let them know I was coming. But I think what we're doing tonight is more imperative than what the government is doing. We are still uh, providing service. And so we often use the hashtag service as power. Um, and I think we exemplify that tonight. Um, we do must, we, we must also uh, count the fact that we have an obligation to our community beyond just what the government has um, offered us the hysteria that people are going based on based on the fact that fear is the easy, the easiest thing to do and so we I don't I don't want to talk about uh, the spiritual content of it I want to talk about the service part of it and so um, I want to encourage all of uh, all of us that are here and tonight and those who we will speak to uh, broad uh, beyond the four walls of this place is that service is still a necessity um, how can we best serve our community during a crisis uh, the fact of the matter is, is that we have a demographic of people, um, uh, and when I say demographic, I'm specifically talking about those who are um, of, the, of the elderly uh, persuasion. And so we want to make sure that those who live near us are getting the best um, advice and service from uh, what we're sharing tonight. It doesn't do us any good if we all know what to do and those around us don't. And so I would hope that this forum is an information-based, education-based forum that we can go out to the neighborhood in which we live to make sure that people understand um, what's going on. And so from a health care perspective, the evolution of the coronavirus is ongoing. Every 15, 30 minutes we get new information that we have to now foster into the information we got prior. It doesn't help us uh, for those of us that are of, of age, 60, 70, 80 uh, years above, to retain that knowledge. So we depend on those in the youth huddle to make sure that that information is uh, present. And so I would encourage you to not only gather like this, but to get information that is valuable, that are that is not based on hysteria. And so uh, we all tell people to wash our hands, uh, cover our mouths with masks, but the, the obvious is that we also need to make sure that the elderly are able to do that with our assistance. All right, there's many people, my father's 88 years old, right? He's an 88 year old man that still travels and does things on his own. Um, but that's not the case for all of our people, right? Um, I'll give you a zip code 11233, right? Or 10039. That represents more than just a zip code, represents the demographic of people that don't have services. Mm -hmm. Period. And so that's the, that's, that's the real deal of it. We have places we, we can go, like the House of Justice, uh, but there's not many places that serve our community and give us really options on what to do in a crisis. We kind of just do what we do, survival mode. I don't think we're in a place where survival mode is going to be sufficient. Therefore, those of us that are getting information, such as a forum like this, or, or a Saturday action rally where our president and founder give us information from places where we're not privy to, um, we must take that information to the community. And so we're doing all we can do here to make sure that we can give uh, quality information, but it's going to take much more than that. And so I'm proposing something that the National Action Network could do that I'm not privy to talk about because it's not approved, but let's talk about the school system, right? And so the governor, I mean the mayor and the chancellor has already proposed that school lunch will be provided to those who qualify for it. What about those who don't? It's a problem for me. If you live in a two-parent home or you're a two-parent uh, home with a parent, or if you're a two-parent with a child, more than likely you don't qualify for free lunch. It's an issue. And so uh, I'm in talks right now with our president and founder to make sure that those who do not qualify, which is a large demographic of us, um, and so free lunch and free breakfast is great, what about dinner? And so uh, my proposal to the House of Justice, and so we, we, we want to make sure that we can kind of serve our community on a scale where we can handle it. Number two, they're talking about telecommunication education. What does that mean? That those that live in demographics like the one 
10339 and 11233, which is Brownsville, Brooklyn, to say two, um, we are still challenged with the digital divide. So we're going to do tele, we're going to do tele education with people that don't have computers or internet. What does that mean for our people? And so many of our children, including my daughter, is celebrating the fact that school may be canceled and for the whole year. But what does that mean? We already doubled under the education gap as far as reading and mathematics. And so um, this is, has to be a holistic approach. And so we could, and, and my, faith is, my faith is unbothered, right? If, if any of you follow me on social media, I've been talking all day about my faith and everything that's canceled except my faith. What does that do for those who do not have that kind of faith? And so some of us are rooted in our faith. Reverend Sharpton preached yesterday in Brooklyn at his home church, Bethany Baptist, that what are you afraid of? Some of us are afraid. So for the, for the remnant of us that are faith-rooted and we're unbothered, I don't have a mask on or gloves. And where I work besides the National Action Network has provided me with that. I do not choose to live my life that way. Simply because. His promise told us that we, he will provide all our needs. And so, for those of us that don't believe or don't have the strength to believe, which you are not wrong to not believe that, we must give them an alternative. And so, their plans are, their plans are in place that, again, I'm not privy to talk about, but there's a plan that the National Action Network has, or in the works of, of, of really formulating, that our people, beyond the reach of the four walls of the House of Justice, can, uh, can actually tangibly benefit from. And so the three things that we talked about is health and safety, education, because again, we have a technology lab here. We already identified that the folks in our community from 155th Street all the way down to 110th Street, we do not have what the mayor assumes that we have. So it's easy to say, well, we're gonna, Google's gonna give us 4,500 laptops or 4,500 tablets. What does that mean for those that can't access internet? More than, I would say more than 40% of people in Harlem don't have cable because we use alternative communications like Fire Stick and other alternatives. We do not have the capability to learn. What does that do to our children in three months? We're already behind, right? So if the average black or Latino child in Harlem, Brooklyn, and South Bronx are already reading below fourth grade level and if they're in the seventh grade, what does that do for us if we leave we lose three months of school? They're going to go backwards. Not only that, but while we're already in school from September, how many, how many after-school programs and tutoring programs have been cut? So we're here, we're here, and people below 96th Street is where, is where my brother is right there. And so when we, when we think about, um, and, I, and again, I don't blame the mayor for delaying it. I do think he made a bad decision by canceling school on a Sunday where people don't have the opportunity to make arrangements. Uh, one in five families are single parents. One in five families' mothers are working two jobs. One in five parents, to be, re to be realistic, qualify for ACS cases by leaving out 10-year-olds to kind of fend for themselves. If they can't come to youth huddle, they're on the streets. And so, again, we must think about holistic remedies like having hot meals for people that are getting off work at 5 o'clock. Not only that, but to make sure that the education um, part of it is sustainable. Those that live 45 minutes from us in Scarsdale and places like New Rochelle where we're talking about rapid testing that are happening, you, you gotta understand, in Harlem right now, Harlem Hospital is one of the facilities that do rapid testing. You know what rapid testing means? If you have symptoms of coronavirus, you get tested. It takes three days before you get your results. Uh, is that happening in other neighborhoods? Is that happening in places where affluent people live? I don't think so. And so we must keep the pressure on that when we are making decisions about the city where minorities play a big role as far as occupancy, that we make sure that people have abilities to get tested and tested uh, frequently. And so while we romanticize about celebrities who are tested, like tonight we, have, we heard Idris Elba as a person that tested positive, Tom Hanks, you know, tested positive. 
Uh, what about Jamel Jackson that tested positive that was on 143rd Street? What about the person that died in Harlem Hospital on, sat on yesterday morning, 73 years old, from cardiac arrest, but he tested positive? Those 73 years old. What about the newborn baby that was born last Thursday that tested positive at, at birth? And so I don't know if our story is being really asserted to the, the greater good of the, of, of, of the whole situation. And so we know that during crisis mode, our community has been uh, less represented in the conversation. But as Reverend Sharpton has projected to us, we are already behind as far as representation in healthcare. And so while we think Affordable Care Act and those uh, insurance companies are on the forefront, some of us will wake up out of ICU if we survive with astronomical bills that we can afford. And so while we may survive corona, what happens to the economics that corona has imposed on us? And so there's, there's several layers to why um, it's important for us to have the conversation. There's several layers that we don't cancel the youth huddle. There's several layers to the fact and the significance that we don't cancel these open forums so people can speak freely about the anxiety that's going on in our community. Um, and so, um, again, I came by here, I'm working right now, but I came by here for a purpose. I didn't come here to speak, but as God would have it, I, I came at a time where we need to have a conversation. And so I would, I would behoove all of us to make sure that we do our research. But the, the basis of our organization, the basis of our whole purpose is service. And so, again, there's some service ideas that are going to be formulated and hopefully we can get the resources to make sure that the Harlem community and those who come to the House of Justice for Refuge is served. Because where the government has failed us, there has always been a House of Justice. God bless you.